Hi, I'm Kevin Borland. I'm a music producer, a guitarist, and a lawyer. I'm going to tell you about an ongoing culinary and cultural adventure I embarked on this summer, and I encourage you to join me, not just by watching my videos, but try it in your city. Monday, July 25th, 2016, was my first day back in Washington, D.C. after a vacation to New Jersey. Wanting to try something new, and after consulting a website called Food Truck Fiesta, I took a walk to the food trucks at Metro Center and found a truck called Bibi Ja that served the popular South Korean dish, bibimbap. Aside from my dislike of the pickles, which I was easily able to remove from my lunch, I was surprised at the high quality of the food coming off this little truck. The next day, Tuesday, July 26th, I wandered to the trucks again, and the artwork on a Persian truck caught my attention. I ordered a lamb kebab with saffron rice, a dish popular in Iran. And again, I was pleasantly surprised by the quality of the food coming from this truck, aptly named Yummy Yum Food. I decided I would sample some more of the trucks throughout the week. Wednesday, July 27th, I tried Blini at a truck called Bell Feast. Blini are Russian buckwheat pancakes. I also tried Tarragon Soda as the bottle caught my eye. The soda had a strong flavor, but it complemented the food. Thursday, July 28th, I tried Khmer Lok Cha, or Cambodian pin noodles, at the Kromom Konbe truck. Although I had been to Southeast Asia a number of times, I'd never sampled the cuisine of Cambodia, and I was surprised how different it was from the cuisines in the surrounding countries. Friday, July 29th, I rounded out the week with some Himalayan soul food, as the truck advertised. Another new cuisine for me from Nepal. I tried pork momo and a side of curry potato salad, arguably among the best potato salads I've eaten. The dumplings resemble Chinese dumplings, but with sauce reminiscent of Indian flavors. After the first week, I didn't realize the extent of the culinary journey on which I'd embarked. I just knew I wanted to try more of these delicious and interesting food trucks. I continued Monday, August 1st, with the French truck, Crepes Parfait. The ham and Gruyere crepe was of the quality you'd expect from a pricey full-service French cafe. I couldn't resist ordering a dessert crepe as well, at a reasonable price as offered by the tiny but ornate establishment. Tuesday, August 2nd, at a Laotian truck called Bubble Tea Licious, I tried seafood soup. The flavors reminded me of the authentic Laotian street food that I had come to love when I was studying in Bangkok another world culinary hotspot. Wednesday, August 3rd, as Cheap Trick might put it, some Indonesian truck was going around. At Satay Indonesian Food, I tried the beef rendang. Anyone who knows me is aware of my love of spicy food, and this dish was very satisfying. Thursday, August 4th, at the lively Peruvian truck, El Fuego DC, I tried Lomo Saltado. Saltado is the Peruvian word for stir-fry, saltado meaning to jump or leap around in the pan. Along with my meal, I had the famous Peruvian Inca Cola, which to me tastes more like bubblegum than cola. Friday, August 5th, I tried lamb karagi and some sides from a food truck called Washington Kebab that had a Pakistani chef. After two weeks of sampling the various ethnic foods from the trucks, I began to wonder how long I could keep it up without repeating a nationality. The next Monday, August 8th, I had a lamb hero at a truck called DC Greek Food. Tuesday, August 9th, at Luke Pam's Vietnamese truck, I tried rice coconut beef. I also went home and began making a spreadsheet to keep track of the foods I had sampled, pulling the names of the vendors from my credit card bill and Facebook posts. Wednesday, August 10th, I had cachapa mixta a savory Venezuelan corn pick pancake from a truck called the Corn Factory. Thursday, August 11th, I sampled gamba saladillo, pork slider andaluz, and veggie tapa from the Spanish tapas truck. The flavors reminded me of the summer I spent in Madrid back in 1992 when the Dream Team dominated the basketball court at the Olympics in Barcelona. Friday, August 12th, at Pat's Delights, I had Jamaican jerk chicken to round out my week. 
Over the weekend, I did some research and determined that according to Wikipedia, there are 206 sovereign states in the world, and if I kept it up for another week, I will have sampled nearly 10% of the world's cuisines without having walked more than a block from my office. A plan was forming as I wondered just how far I can take this. Surely I'd run out of food trucks soon, but what next? Monday, August 15th, chicken korma at the Indian kebab truck was very good. Korma is one of my favorite flavors from India. Tuesday, August 16th, Sega Wat, or Ethiopian beef stew, served on injera, Ethiopian fermented bread, at a truck whimsically named Lily Pad on the Run. Wednesday, August 17th, at Mexicana Square truck, I had a delicious Mexican steak burrito. Thursday, August 18th, I was knocked out by the quality of food at the Basil Time truck serving Italian lasagna. I sampled a few lasagnas, but the black truffle lasagna was out of this world. That and the Laotian seafood from two weeks ago were my favorites so far. Oh, did I mention it came with a yummy salad too? Friday, August 19th, I had to walk to Gallery Place because I was running out of nationalities at the Metro Center. I found bangers and mash at a truck called Sixes and Sevens serving cuisine from the United Kingdom. Monday, August 22nd, again at Gallery Place, I found a Cuban pork roast at a truck cleverly named Jerks of the Caribbean. 21 days into my adventure, I had sampled 10% of the world's cuisines by nationality, and I was confident that I could keep it up. I began to frame my adventure as a quest, a no-repeat nationality workday lunch challenge. Tuesday, August 23rd, chicken teriyaki at a Japanese truck with a simple name, Fresh Food. I loved the sign that read, sorry, no sell sushi today. It reminded me that for many of the food truck chefs, these trucks are their American dream. And maybe the pride they have in sharing their cuisines with hungry patrons in their new country explains the unusual high quality of the food coming from these tiny restaurants on wheels. Wednesday, August 24th, I couldn't find a food truck within walking distance that would qualify as a no-repeat. So I went to my first stationary restaurant in nearly a month. I chose Zaytinya as I walked toward Chinatown, just a few blocks from my office. The cuisine was Turkish. I had only eaten Turkish food once before and I knew I'd be in for a treat. I tried a dish called Hunkar Begindi and I was not disappointed. It was lamb served in a stew of eggplant puree and cheese. It was up there with the Laotian seafood and the black truffle lasagna in terms of quality. I'm not sure how I would rank these dishes against each other because each was so different and I like them for different reasons. Thursday, August 25th. One month ago today, I humbly began my journey with a plate of bibimbap, but I had come so far since. I walked a pen quarter to Gordon Biersch for some Austrian schnitzel chicken schnitzel with capers to be precise. I love capers ever since I first tried them as a kid when my Aunt Debbie took me to a nice restaurant that served veal piccata. I can still taste that meal every time I bite into each tangy little bean. Friday, August 26th, I outdid myself. I got off from work early, so I took the metro to Arlington to an Australian restaurant. I ordered emu tartare, which was not on their lunch menu, but when I explained my quest, they were eager to serve me. Emu is a large Australian bird resembling an ostrich. Tartare means raw or uncooked. Think bird sushi. This dish ranked in the top four along with the Turkish, Laotian, Italian dishes that I had tried earlier this month. 25 ethnicities and 25 consecutive work days so far. I combined the first five weeks of my adventure into this short video because as I began my quest, I didn't realize the magnitude of what I was doing. So I just took a photograph or two at each restaurant to share with my friends. But now all that has changed to be continued.